Good morning, everyone. So, went to bring my lawnmower in the garage here to do some service to it, and it wouldn't start. And been having an intermediate no start problem with it anyway. It wouldn't turn over, wouldn't click anything. And if you tried it enough times, it would eventually start. But this morning, I went to bring it in the garage, and it would not do anything. So, started troubleshooting and diagnosing it. Wanted to get it in the garage first, so I wasn't working on it out of the barn. And as you can see, this morning, that was my starter. So, brought it in. I'm going to go over how I troubleshot this and what I was looking for. So, first thing you want to check, I want to see if I had 12 volts. Maybe I had a dead battery. I did not have a dead battery. So, what I did, brought it in the garage here, and then I thought, maybe it's a safety switch. These lawnmowers have tons of safeties. I mean, if any of these are not in the proper place, your handbrake's not set, decks engaged, any of that, it won't start. So make sure everything is where it was supposed to be and looking to see what was going on with that. So they were all in the proper position, but that doesn't mean a switch isn't bad. So instead of going around and checking every switch on this, what they do is they break the power going to the starter solenoid so what this is this is my starter solenoid now actually you can see i have unhooked it going to the starter and what it does is it brings 12 volts from the battery directly here as you can see my test light and it has power going to it when you turn the key it puts 12 volts here if all your safeties are met and then it will put 12 volts here to go to the starter so the way I diagnosed it this morning is I went over, as you can see, my test light is grounded back here at the battery. It's always best to put them at the battery if you can. Came here, and I want to see if I have 12 volts going here. If I do, that means all my safeties are met, and it should put power to this post, which would send it to my starter. So if I turn this key to the start position, that red light should come on if all my safeties are met. And it does. So that tells me that if this starter solenoid is good, it will send power to the starter. So let's try it if it'll sit there with one hand. So if the solenoid's good, that should red light should come on when I try the start button again. If it doesn't come on, I don't know if you can hear it. As you can see, it should be in start position, and I have nothing. So that means the solenoid's bad, which makes sense because of the way it's been acting. And it's almost like if you bounce it around, it'll eventually start. So I've had old cars and trucks, you would have to crawl up under and hit the starter a few times, and then it would start. Similar uh, kind of thing with this starter solenoid. But I want to show you what I was talking about with the safeties, too. So let's say it were a safety. As you can see, it's still like it was. But let's pull this handle back, okay? I bet I get no red light. Nothing. Because it broke that circuit with one of those safeties. I put it back in its position. I have it again. So I'm going to pull this solenoid out and go uptown and see if I can find one. So I got my solenoid out. A couple things I should have mentioned if you're doing this. Always disconnect your battery cable. As you can see, I disconnected the negative side. And you would think, well, when you disconnect the positive side, if that's what you're working with. And you can do that. The reason I like doing the negative is when you're taking off the positive, if you were taking this wrench and taking that bolt off and you tapped anything metal, it's going to arc. If you take off the negative side, it can't arc anywhere because it's already grounded. It can't get grounded more. And once you have the negative off, you can take the positive off if you need to. So, took the negative off. Over here, it was just a couple wires I was showing you. You can see right there where it bolts down. And I just pushed these back up under here to get them out of the way. This is the one to the starter. So, brought it over here and put it on the bench. I was going to test it. So what I've got, yep, 12 volt source for my battery pack here. Battery pack's grounded. 
And if I put 12 volts here, it should click. And what I did, I hooked my leads up to it, to my meter on ohms. So if it completes that circuit, it should beep. And as you can see, nothing. So I bet if I take and hit it on the bench a few times, yep. So it's just a bad solenoid. Which is good with me. You think you're out bouncing around, mowing grass. Eventually, which you saw the first time, it quit doing it. So, I got a new solenoid from Napa. It's not exactly the same because this one has rear bracket. But it's fine. The bottom bracket's the same. It'll bolt right in. $11 fix, and now my son has no excuse not to mow grass. So, we'll slap this in real quick. Put it in just like the old one came out and see if it works. All right, got my starter solenoid back on the new one. Didn't take but a few minutes. Got my ground connector, ground cable connected back. So I'm not even gonna put the test light on this. And as you can see, I left the side going to the starter off. Just wanted to verify this works. And I'm not even gonna put the test light on it. If it works, you'll hear it click. There it is. So that means every time I turn that, I'm going to have 12 volts right there. So let's just try it and get that to lay straight. There it is. See, simple fix. Wasn't that bad, just had to know what to put on. And the way I got this in the garage <laughs> from the barn is I just bypassed this solenoid with two screwdrivers. What I did is I put one screwdriver on each side. Let's see if I can get my big hand out of the way. And when I touched them together, it just completed that circuit. Would not recommend doing that every time you're gonna start one because it bypasses all safeties and it's not good for the solenoid or the wiring either. But it will get you out of a pinch. It'll get you in the garage where your tools are and hopefully get you back to mowing. But just wanted to go over how I diagnosed this and repaired it. Hopefully it'll help somebody out. Y'all be good. Appreciate it.